Okay, so the, the main reaction to this, especially from the left, is if we just had more laws, that somehow that would stop this stuff. Now we have laws about murder, we have laws about shooting people, we have laws about breaking into people's homes and attacking people and all sorts of things, but they seem to think just more laws would stop this. Um, here is Adam Kinzinger, who believe it or not is a Republican, but he, he basically is a Democrat. Um, and he's talking about raising the age of the purchase of a firearm. We just raised the age of purchasing cigarettes, for God's sakes, to 21. The age of buying alcohol is 21. I think the age to buy a gun should be 21. And people can come to me with all the caveats about, well, they can serve in the military. I'll say the same thing about drinking beer, by the way, between the age of 18 and 21. But I want to remind people that in the military, you have access to weapons, but the military deeply and, and intensely controls when you can have that weapon, when you can carry it, and when you can have ammo. You don't get to take it home and put it on your pillow, so that's really important for people to realize. Okay, I wanted to play this clip because every now and again, someone who I don't agree with on anything says something somewhat sane. And the idea that you can't vote, but you can go to the military, we have these odd inconsistencies, 18 to do this, 21 to do this, get a gun at 18, but can't buy a beer. I mean, some of this makes absolutely no sense. Uh, Rav, let me start with you on this. I mean, the, the odd inconsistencies, uh, I know you're Canadian, but from an American, per or give me from a Canadian perspective too, I'm not even fully sure on all of your age stuff there. Yeah, yeah, the, the restrictions are, are much uh, different here. For, for drinking, it's, um, I feel like I should know this, but usually, usually you don't follow these rules when you're in high school. I'll have my guys check. What's the age, what's the age limit on drinking in Canada? We'll get that for you in a sec, go ahead. Um, but no, I, I wanted to actually just touch on one point quickly. You said, Dave, earlier about like gun violence, because this has been the centerpiece of my reporting. It's like you have all these laws in, in blue cities, especially, but we've seen homicide rates rise exponentially. Like in Minneapolis, they've risen like 30 uh, percent in L.A., St. Louis, New York City, uh, in Philadelphia. I reported last year uh, in 2020, there were more homicide deaths than in homicide deaths combined for 2014 and 2015 that there were more homicide deaths last year in Philadelphia than two years combined, 2014 and 15. And a lot of that was due to the riots and defunding the police mm -hmm. and all these things that we should be talking about. We should be talking about uh, having a robust law enforcement response. Um, I think it was uh, Ben Shapiro who retweeted this morning um, that there was this new detail um, that we, I think we just found out that there was no armed response to the shooter for 12 full minutes after he crashed his car. Okay, that's a conversation we should be having about why that didn't happen. We should be looking at realistic solutions and actually examining what happened here and looking at the broader trend of rising homicidal violence in inner city um, communities um, rather than just um, having these one-sided, uh, narrow-minded political conversations that I think the whole mainstream media has plunged into. Yeah, and I also think we have to acknowledge without excusing anyone who did anything wrong, if any of the officers there did not go in when they should have and everything else, that there is no such thing as a perfect system. We don't know exactly when people knew everything. We always want the easy answer, like, oh, this should have happened at exactly this moment. And again, that's not to excuse anyone if anyone acted negligently, but there just aren't always perfect answers. Rav, just to let you know, uh, in Canada, the drinking age is by province. So where you are in British Columbia, it's 19 but it is 18 in Quebec and Alberta. Just FYI, if you're looking to get a drink a little later. Um, okay. Sarah, I, referencing I, what I'm, you- I'm 21, I'm 21, so oh. that's good. But, <laughs> but I don't think I was following that in high school. So anyway, we don't, we, we should talk about that. Noted, noted, we won't report you. Um, Sarah, the, this idea of the 18 to 21, so Kinzinger, who I'm sure you're no great fan of either, uh, this idea that you can get a gun at 18, but you can't drink to, 20, to 21, is something worth talking about, these inconsistencies there. Uh, but you earlier mentioned what's happening with young men. And there obviously is something happening with young men right now um, for many, many cultural reasons. Do you think there's any legitimacy to perhaps raising that age from 18 to 21? Well- On the gun side. I would say when, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that it, uh, it becomes a slippery slope issue for me that um, I know what the left wants uh, at the end of the day. I know mm -hmm. what their end game is. And I think that the Second Amendment is very clear, even though it can be uncomfortable at times. I would also argue that they really don't 
believe these uh, these ideas that people are too young, that that they're still children, that they don't need to have some sort of uh, you know a weapon because at the end of the day, these are the same people who are weaponizing our children, uh, who are uh, telling them that at three they can change their gender. So at three you're supposed to have the the knowledge and the foresight and the wisdom to know what gender and sexuality you are, but somehow at 18 you're not old enough to know how to use a gun properly. So it's just it's just the inconsistencies coming from the other side that I get very uncomfortable buying into the conversation. Uh, again, at the end of the day, it has to be a, a family issue, right? It's it's these young men who this this young man was failed at every level, his family life, mm -hmm. his friends, uh, all of these people saw these signs and no one did anything. And I think at the end of the day, y your families have to be involved. And I know that that's not always going to work perfectly. As you said, there's no perfect system on either side, but we can't be chipping away at a fundamental right of this country because it's going to be a slippery slope down to the bottom. And we know what uh, I would call Adam Kinzinger, basically the left, but we know what these people in power want. And that is ultimately control. They want to be the only ones with the firearms. And so it just, it's, I agree with you that like, if we were, if we were talking with uh, a, a, another party who I believed to be coming from a, a morally sound place, I might be willing to have the conversation, but not with people who think that you can change your gender at two or three years old.